following is a Big Ten Productions presentation. Today, the nation's second leading rusher, Anthony Thompson, leads the Indiana Hoosiers against quarterback Jeff George, the Big Ten's fourth-ranked passer, and the Fighting Illini of Illinois. It's a key Big Ten Conference matchup with both schools hoping for postseason play. Indiana and Illinois is coming up next. Memorial Stadium at Champaign, Illinois. It's the Indiana Hoosiers against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. You're looking live at Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Better than 60,000 expected on a damp, misty day as the 6-1-1 one one Hoosiers meet the 4-3-1 Fighting Illini. And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Wayne Larrabee with Jim Grabowski. Both teams are hoping for postseason play. Let's take a look at where they stand. In terms of bowl consideration, Indiana at the top of the list still is the Rose Bowl. Well, they have a chance at the Rose Bowl, but they need some help from the opponents of Michigan, and those prospects don't look very good for someone to beat Michigan. Let's take a look at the remaining schedule now for Indiana. Of course, they play here at Illinois today. Michigan State will be a pivotal game. That will be a very pivotal game. Indiana will be looking for revenge. Michigan State knocked them off big last week, last year. And, of course, the Hoosiers finish up with Purdue. Well, the Fighting Illini have had a better-than-expected season this year, and they are being considered for a couple of bowls. The Rose Bowl, they have a mathematical chance, and, matter of fact, they may control their destiny a little bit better than Indiana. They do control their destiny better than Indiana. If they win their next three ball games, they're in, they will either tie or win the Big Ten Championship. And there, we'll get a look at the schedule. There it is, Indiana today, of course, a very big game. Uh, and then Michigan next week on the road, followed by Northwestern. All right, today's ball game brings together the number one offense of the Big Ten Conference against the number two defense of kind of the uh, immovable object against the moving force, so to speak. Yeah, Indiana has such a great rushing offense. You can look at the statistics. They lead in total offense. They're leading rushing offense. But Illinois is number two in total defense and number two in rushing defense. It should be a good matchup. This is the first time since the mid-1940s that the Hoosiers have put together three straight winning seasons. When we start with Indiana, if we take a look at the defense, we're going to start with Willie Bates in the middle of that defense. Big number 81 is one of the leading tacklers in the conference. Well, the strength of the Indiana defense is their linebackers, and the leader of those linebackers is that man, Willie Bates, averaging 10.1 tackles per game. Willie Bates, 10 tackles a game for the Hoosiers. Now, one of the finest quarterbacks of the Big Ten Conference, and he operates in the shadow of a great running back, Dave Schnell, and John Makovic is really high on him. Well, John Makovic feels that he may be the best quarterback in the Big Ten. That's an all-around quarterback because he can throw the football, he can run, he's the leader of this offensive unit. And for Bill Mallory's Hoosiers, Anthony Thompson really is the man who carries the mail, and we talk about him every time we mention Indiana. Well, we're going to hear him all afternoon. He's number two in the nation, leading the Big Ten in rushing. Also, he's a good receiver. He scored 20 touchdowns. The Fighting Illini come into this ball game today hoping that a win it will really put them in the bowl picture as we mentioned but this ball club defensively has not only come along on the offensive side but defensively they played very well this season and they're led by a little linebacker by the name of willie bates who leads this conference in or i should say Derek brownlow leads this conference in tackles you said little linebacker he's only they list him at 511 he's 510 or 59 good hard-nosed kid though he'll stick his face in the in the ball you'll see him right here on a great defensive play he slips the tackle, jumps in, makes the tackle, causes the fumble. He's their leader on the defense. On offense, in the offensive backfield, Keith Jones has provided a double-edged sword of uh, efficiency for uh, Illinois this year. He's not only a good runner, but he's a fine receiver, and he's playing healthy this year and having an outstanding season. Good, strong runner, over 700 yards rushing, but he's number two in the conference in receiving. He's caught 35 passes this year. And a quarterback, Jeff George, the sophomore, has really come along well for John Mankovic's team. He is a sophomore. He had a year of experience at Purdue, but he may be the best pure thrower in the conference this year. He's got two years left to go, though, too. All right, so our matchup today, the Indiana Hoosiers taking on the Fighting Illini of Illinois. We'll be back to take a look at what's coming up today and review what happened last week at the Big Ten Conference when we resume from Champaign, Illinois.
Today's game is being brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Apple Computer, maker of Macintosh, versatile computers, giving you the power to be your best. By Ameritech, solutions that work. And by Miller Lite, for great taste, there is only one light beer, Miller Lite. It is a damp, dreary day this afternoon in Champaign, Illinois, as the Hoosiers of Indiana take on the Fighting Illini of Illinois. And a pleasant good afternoon once again, everyone. Wayne Larrabee with Jim Grabowski. We've got a lot of action coming up in the Big Ten today. But first off, before we detail what's coming up today, let's review what occurred last week in the Big Ten Conference. Michigan over Northwestern. The Wolverines continue to hold on to the top spot of the conference race. Tailback Tony Bowles. Three touchdowns. He rushed for 153 yards on 27 carries. And that Michigan defense has allowed a touchdown or less in three of their last four games. Indiana over Iowa. You know, the Hoosiers had a 35-3 second period lead before the Hawkeyes broke loose for 23 unanswered points. Anthony Thompson rushed a school record 47 times, 168 yards, and three touchdowns. But Dave Schnell has been steady at quarterback all season, operating in the shadow of Mr. Thompson. Well, I think Schnell is really the key to the Indiana offense. You talk about Anthony Thompson. He's their runner, but Schnell is the leader. He, he's a get-it-done type of quarterback. You see the great reception here to Rob Turner. Great moves in for the touchdown. Elsewhere in the Big Ten last week, Michigan State, in a game many of you may have seen on the Big Ten Television Network, defeated Ohio State by 10. Sophomore running back Highland Hickson came off the bench and rushed for 187 yards. Starter Blake Ezor totaled 148 yards. I'll tell you, the Spartans literally trampled the Buckeyes, rushing for 372 yards in the ball game. Illinois and Minnesota played to a 27-all tie. Gophers rallied from a 24-7 third quarter deficit to take a 27-24 lead. The Illini tied the game when Doug Higgins uh, nailed a 44-yard field goal with one second to play. Perhaps the decisive play in the game, at least the one that turned it around, was this 91-yard pass play. Scott Schaefer dropping back from his own nine-yard line. Lofts it to Jason Bruce. Now watch Stephen Jordan of the Illini, number nine. He thinks he has an interception right here. He's got the ball. But Jason Bruce just takes it away from him right there. He's got the ball, and it's a foot race, and Jason Bruce wins it for the touchdown. And in the other game played of the Big Ten last week, Purdue over Wisconsin, Larry Sullivan field goals of 30, 31, and 40 yards. So where does that leave us? Right here. Michigan on top of the Big Ten race, still unbeaten in conference play. Hoosiers trying to keep the heat on the Wolverines. Illini and Spartans with identical three one and one records are waiting in the wings. Iowa in fifth place with two ties. Second half of the uh, Big Ten, Purdue right there on the top, and then Northwestern, Minnesota, Ohio State, and Wisconsin round out the standings. Games today in the Big Ten. Michigan hosts Minnesota, the battle for the Little Brown Jug. Michigan leading the series, the 47-21-2. Northwestern at Iowa, Hawkeyes still hopeful of a high conference finish in a bowl invitation. Michigan State is at Purdue. The Spartans are riding the wave of a three-game winning streak and holding out hopes for a share of the Big Ten title. Michigan State leads the series 21-19-2. That's the third tightest series among Big Ten teams. And Michigan State's really got their running game going. They're averaging over 212 yards a game rushing, and Purdue is giving up over 212 yards a game rushing. So I think it's going to be a case of Blake Ezor and Highland Hickson having another big day. Wisconsin at Ohio State, it's been a very long year for both schools. Buckeyes hold a 41-12 and four advantage in that series. In our presentation today, Indiana playing at Illinois. And as we mentioned before, it's a game that has a lot of bowl game implications tied to the result of today's contest here in Champaign. Indiana, Jim Grabowski, gave up over 500 yards of passing to Chuck Hartley in the Iowa Hawkeyes last week. This week, they face another fine quarterback in Jeff George. What do they have to do to tighten that pass defense? Wayne, I really don't think they're going to do too much different. They're the kind of team that says, here's what we're going to do. You just got to beat us. And I'll let me show you what their basic secondary coverage is. Indiana usually comes into a deep secondary coverage with a three deep zone. You'll see the free safety here. He has the center field. The cornerback will take the deep third here. This cornerback, the deep third here. And the safety will take the flat area here. And the linebackers will all take their drops. 
The lower part here is five men cover the field. The deep people have three men cover in the field. Now, Illinois will attack this defense by the turn-in patterns. You'll see the wide receiver turn in here, and the tight end will become a, an effective receiver against the zones. Look for the tight end today. Now, if Illinois is effective, beating Indiana in the short area, you can expect Indiana to counter with what we call the two deep zone. And it looks something like this. Now here the free safety takes the deep half of the field. This safety will take the other deep half of the field. They'll have five men underneath and they'll come with this linebacker blitzing. So now they have a four-man rush putting some heat on the quarterback but still have the coverage underneath. Five men underneath but the key here is it's two men coming in the deep area, covering half the field. Again, the tight end could be a very primary receiver into this pattern, trying to hit the seam of the zone here or out in this area over here. Now, let's see if Indiana goes in this coverage, and let's see if, in, if Illinois takes advantage of those zone defenses. There is a look at Memorial Stadium. It is damp and misty. It's a kind of a dreary day, but this is a very important game. The Coin toss will be occurring in a few moments out of the 50-yard line. The keys to today's ball game, the Miller must, Jim Grabowski. Wayne, for the Hoosiers, they must pressure Jeff George. We said he's a great thrower, maybe the most talented in the league, pure thrower. If they don't put pressure on George, he's going to burn you. And they must avoid turnovers. They haven't had a history this year of doing a lot of turnovers, but if they turn the ball over in key positions, Illinois could win. And they must prevent the big play. They can't give up the long pass, the long run. They can't get into the hole. And on the other side of the ball, the Illini must slow down AT. That's Anthony Thompson. You're not going to stop him. People have said that all the time. They try to stop him. They're not going to stop him. They're just going to slow him down. And establish the ground game. Illinois wants to get into a ball control game. To do that, they must run the football. And they must have a solid kicking game. And that's been one of the problems of the Illini. Brian Mankhausen ranks eighth in the league in punting. He has to have a better performance today. There you get a look at what we're up against game condition-wise here today. Indiana won the toss and deferred their decision. You can also see the drizzle on our lens right there. Well, Wayne, the question is, what does a drizzle do? Who, is, who has the advantage? And I guess I'd have to say it would be Indiana. If the conditions get bad, Indiana will certainly have the advantage because they had that great ground game. Also, the uh, again, the wind conditions, as you get a look at the flag right there, and now this is the 50th meeting between these two schools, and Illinois uh, holds a hefty advantage. As we mentioned in the pregame show, Indiana has only put together three consecutive winning seasons in this Six one and one record guarantees them a winning season for three years in a row for the first time since the mid 1940s. So they do not have a long legacy of success from a football standpoint at Indiana. It's always been considered a basketball school. Bill Mallory is doing a good job of turning that around. Oh, he's done a great job there at Indiana. Just a good, solid coach. He built it. You know, his first year he was 0 and 11, but he didn't panic. He said, "I'm going to build a program. It's going to take me a few years," and he's there. Again, we expected almost 65,000 to be on hand today. I imagine a lot of them were dissuaded by the weather to come here. And it is going to be chilly, and it's kind of windy. And as we mentioned, there is a mist in the air, so to speak. And Illinois and Indiana getting set to do battle. Doug Higgins heads out to the 35-yard line. He'll be kicking off. John Mankovic is the head coach at Illinois. There he is in among the helmets, so to speak. <laughs> with the cap on. And Bill Mallory, as we mentioned, a great job here at Indiana. And of course, prior to Indiana, he coached where? At uh, Northern Illinois, Northern uh, Iowa, if I'm not mistaken, also Colorado. Did a fine job at Colorado in the mid 70s. You saw Bill Mallory around the sideline. Looks like he's uh, trying to stay warm. Uh, it's not going to be bad. Weather, I mean, the weather conditions aren't great because of the rain, but it's not overly cold. It's not going to turn to sleep. We're going to have a good ball game. Three back deep for Indiana, led by that man, Rod Turner. He's the guy they want to handle the football, averaging 20.3 yards per return, the long of 38. Granderson and Eddings are on either side. Here's the kickoff, and we're underway. Allows it to float out of bounds to the near 
side, precipitating a penalty flag. And Illinois will set up five yards deeper. So they'll retry it. Instead of from the 35, be back to the 30. That, that almost guarantees good field position for Indiana. It's kind of a crosswind out there, Jim, across the field, it appears. And going to be hard to tell. I imagine this obviously will ha it'll have a big effect, especially on the punting game. There's the uh, crew of officials. Jerry Hendrickson is the referee. You'll be hearing from him from time to time. Wayne, I've spent a lot of time down here, and when the hawk blows, it blows down here. It just comes out of that north end and swirls around in the bowl on the south end. Really makes it hard to predict, doesn't it, as to what to do and, and where, what direction the wind is going to be blowing in on any given play. Higgins has it on the tee and will try it once again from the 30-yard line. The Illini and the Hoosiers. Doug Higgins, a sophomore from Normal, Illinois. Here's his kickoff. Again, he seemed to slice it toward the near side. Taken by Eddings. Eddings out across the 25. The bounce of that ball seemed to give Illinois a chance to cover it. Henry Jones led the charge, and we've got a late flag down in the play. And it looks like it may be a personal foul against the Hoosiers. Sean Turner was also there on the tackle to Darrell Eddings. Someone getting a little extra is in after the whistle. You see the officials conferring over there, and where is it going to go? That's it, personal foul against Indiana. Watch Troy Mason, number five. He got a little excited right there. Not a very smart penalty. This takes it from the out beyond the 25, puts it back inside the 15. There's the offensive line. The guards have been extremely strong. Schrader and Radke, Bargo a solid center. Fryer back from injury. Tony Buford. An outstanding wide receiver. Rob Turner has really come on. Anthony Thompson carries the mail and Dave Schnell in the fishing quarterback. This is Schnell, first and ten. From the 14. Anthony Thompson. Mo Gardner was the first to arrive on the scene again of a couple of yards. Second and eight upcoming. Len Cobb filled in well, along with the John Wachter on the defensive line. Mel Agee, Mo Gardner, John Wacker played very well up front. In the linebacking core, we've talked about Brownlow. He's outstanding. Glass and hurting with an ankle injury. Cobb and Green are well decorated in the secondary. Primos has solidified the free safety position. Second down and eight from the 16. Thompson, good cutback. May have lost the football. If they had whistled the play dead, they rule he's down. One official is saying he was down before the fumble near the 25-yard line. John Wachter and Greg Conrad on the stop for Illinois. Marlon Primos was also there. You know, when you have a runner like Anthony Thompson, to be that good, you have to have some blocking out in front. You'll see Schrader, the pulling guard, blocking out on Glenn, Glenn Cobb, making a nice hole back to the inside. And let's see the fumble right there. He was down. He was not down. Rolling right. Schnell on third down. Schnell dives for the first down. Brownlow forced him out. 11-yard gain to a Hoosier first down. And you see why John McEvick has so much respect. The Illini coach has so much respect for the Hoosier quarterback. Schnell is a very efficient passer, but he's also dangerous on the run. Well, and a real mistake by someone on the Illini defense. Did not get the contain. Allowed Schnell get to, to get to the outside. And like you said, he'll kill you out on the outside. He has a great ability to run the football. He prefers the throw, but he can run it. Headings to the top of your screen. Buford to the bottom. First down. Anthony Thompson on a spin move, and the Illini were ready. Mel A.G. 
which he arrived initially on the scene. Gain of a yard or two. Well, A.G. had the first shot of it. You saw Anthony Thompson's ability. He's a spun off that tackle, turned the loss into a short, short gain. Anthony Thompson is very strong. He'll bench press, I believe it's around uh, 400 pounds. That's strong. He is a weightlifter in his spare time. It's one of his hobbies. Second and nine for Indiana. Schnell off the play action. Buford for a first down to Illini territory at the 49. And Stephen Jordan made the play 14 yard gain. When you saw on the play, he rolled to the left. Illinois had a zone to the left, but by the fact that Snell rolls that way, he brings the short man up closer. They dumped it over the short man in front of the safety. Good play call by Indiana. First and ten for the Hoosiers. Rob Turner out to the top of your screen, now out of the picture. Breyer on that big offensive line, number 79. He had him open, Wayne. He had Turner open on the post, being covered by Chris Green. Schnell just overshot him. It looks like that may be the Indiana game plan. You're going to roll out Schnell, and they're going to throw the football. As we pointed out earlier, Illinois is number two in the conference against the run. Perhaps we'll see Indiana mix it up a little bit more. They ran a lot last week, and uh, Thompson had a big game last week against Iowa. Second and ten for the Hoosiers. Eddings in motion. Thompson. To the 45. Not much farther, although he may have leaned into the 44. Chris Green and John Wachter arrived initially on the scene. You see the strength, the thrust in his legs, and he's very strong in the upper body also. Great durability, too. He's rushed the ball 252 times coming into this football game. That is over 55% of the rushing attempts are handled by that man, Anthony Thompson. We're scoreless. We have 12 minutes left to go. First period of play for Champagne. This is the first offensive sequence of the game. Second down at about seven. on the stop, 11-yard pickup. Too much cushion. Stephon Jordan, the cornerback, just gave the wide receiver too much room out there, and Schnell found him. Look at the wind. Crosswind here in the stadium. Again, very hard to detect on the floor of the stadium exactly what that wind is doing. First down. Miller. Miller, a transfer from Michigan State, a sophomore. Mel Agee responded defensively, gained of a couple of yards, down to the 30. They'll run that fullback every once in a while just to make sure the defense respects that up there. Miller came in with 37 carries, and Gene Boyd, the other fullback, just 13 carries. You're right, just a little bit, just enough to keep him honest. They won't run him off it. Second and seven, gain of three on the previous play. About the 24-yard line, he's a yard short of the first down. Rivero Price, the outside linebacker. John Wachter on the defensive line in on the stop. Going to be a cold day in the stands. I'll tell you, that was a heck of a play by Romero Bryce. He took on the block of the tight end, Tim Jordan. Took on the block, made the tackle. Excellent defensive play. Third down. About two yards to go now. As they spot the football to the 25 of Illinois. Thompson, first down to the 21. Any sliver of an opening, he will dive through. Marlon Primos in the secondary, the free safety. Bill Henkel playing inside linebacker in place of the injured Steve Lassen. Team up on the stop. 
Indiana's had 16 touchdown drives of 70 yards or more this season. This offense does not make mistakes on a regular basis. You can't if you play that kind of football. Ball control, they will grind it out. From the 21-yard line, first and 10. Rob Turner in motion. Anthony Thompson. First and goal, Indiana. 11-yard gain. Sitnik there over to make the tackle along with Wachter. You see Turner's going in motion, Wayne. He's going to that wide side. They're handing it off to Thompson, the wide side. You've another, got another wide receiver out in front making a block. You see Kel Miller right there, 34, making a good block. There's Turner making the block. Good blocking out in front for Anthony Thompson. They mark it just inside the 10-yard line. First down and goal to go. Thompson, six carries, 32 yards. Thompson. Stephen Jordan made the tackle near the four-yard line. Gain of six, and let's get a look at it down low. Wayne, he does, Anthony Thompson does such a good job of threatening outside. You look here, he threatens outside, sets up a block, turns it back in there. Hey, that's why he's number two in the nation. Six feet, 205 pounds, a junior from Terre Haute, Indiana. Thompson, the Big Ten, and rushing second nationally. Too much of a hole down by the goal line, Wayne. You don't expect that kind of a hole. They're going over their three inside guys, Don Schrader, Ron Fargo, and Tim Ranty. They're two guards, Ranty and Schrader. They call the twins. They hang around together. They're both from the Chicago area. They Facially, they look alike, and they go together everywhere. 15th play of the drive coming up for Indiana. They are three and three and third down. Third and goal just inside the two. Thompson's 21st touchdown. He's closing in on the Big Ten record. Now watch the hole inside. Again, Thompson threatens outside to step out. He sees the hole back inside. When you got a hole that size, you're not going to stop a man like that. Pete Stoyanovich has made 94 straight point after touchdowns. That's an Indiana record. I believe it's an NCAA record. 62 points on the season, 32 of 32 PATs. And his kick is good. He's hit 95 straight point after touchdown attempts. 8.04 left to go. Indiana breaks on top. We'll be back after these words from your local stations. This broadcast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference is prohibited. Anthony Thompson, 42 yards on nine carries. Here's his ninth carry in his final two yards on the drive. Watch the block, number 77, Don Schrader makes the key block, turns out the defender, opens a nice hole for Anthony Thompson. It made it, he made it look easy. Trying to keep warm, there's A.T. Could you tell? On the that bench. really is A.T. I can't believe he's, he's just a junior. <laughs> That's the thing. Seem he's like going to be scary as a senior, I'm telling you. Twin <laughs> safety's back deep for the fighting Illini. Keith Jones on the far side. And dropping back deep on the near side for Illinois, Greg Boisaw. Pete Stoyanovich, who arguably is one of the best kickers in the country, has to have the ball held. It is Jones at the 14. Cut down from behind by Mike Dumas. First down for the fighting Illini, across the 20 near the 23. Offensive line a bit undersized for this 
uh, conference of the Big Ten. Mark McGowan's actually a guard who's done an outstanding job at the right tackle position. Bellamy, good speed of wide receivers. Stephen Williams, one of the leaders of the Big Ten in reception. Jeff George having a fine year. Griffith and Jones both can break it. There's a look at Jeff George, a transfer from Purdue. Shoot, though, by the Indiana defense. They pursued very well, and Jim Sams came over from his nose tackle position to make the hit. Sams starting in place of Bauer in the lineup right now. Harrison Schlereth. The linebackers, the men to watch Joe Huff on the blitz. Willie Bates on the inside. Andre Hall starts in place of Joe Ziegler, the injured Joe Ziegler, at cornerback. Brian DeWitt's a fine safety. Second and nine for Illinois. Near the Illini 24. Keith Jones, hit by Joe Huff, went nowhere. Now it is a third down and nine. And this is what John Makovic and some of his assistants were telling us last night, that they have to stay out of third down and obvious passing situation. What they were looking for is third and six or less. They are tremendously efficient on third down and six or less. They're facing third down and about eight right now. Uh, you're so right, Wayne. They want to run the football. They want to control the game by running the ball. And to date, they haven't done it. 24. Spread formation for Jeff George. Sean Wax in motion. George has time to throw. Stephen Williams, the intended receiver near the 41 yard line. The pass off the mark. Brian DeWitt and Eric Coleman in the neighborhood for Indiana. Fourth down. Number one. Wayne, this is exactly what we were talking about in the chalk talk. You'll see the zone. Right now, you'll see a two-deep zone. They're coming right out in the two-deep zone. They're going to the deep turn in the lower part of your screen. That's Williams turning in, ball thrown a little behind him. And really, Williams made the right turn. He turned away from the linebacker, and Jeff George didn't read it. Former quarterback Brian Menkhausen on what has to be a nightmarish type day for a punter. Tony Buford back in single safety, one of the best in the Big Ten. Third of the Big Ten, 19th nationally, punt returns. Penalty marker is down, and Menkhausen a line drive kick. Buford. Got by Doug Amaya before being colored down out near the 34-yard line. A lot of dancing on that play by Buford. 48-yard punt, 6-yard return. Mark Pater made the stop on the play. Matt Pater, I should say. Illegal procedure against Illinois. Let's see if Bill Mallory wants him to try it again. Indiana would have possession out at their 34-yard line. That's not half bad. And apparently Illegal they're going procedure, to offense, decline. Turn down the penalty. Well, I think Bill Mallory feels with my offense, I'll take it any place on the field. You'll see there, Illinois leads the league in penalties with averaging eight per game. Indiana, on the other hand, I believe is third in the league in penalties, third fewest, that is. Take a look at these two teams. Jim Grabowski, we were talking with some of the Illinois people. Illinois, a very young team. I mean, they're starting in the neighborhood. I believe it's like 10 sophomore freshman players in their 22. A very young team for Illinois. We've got a break of the action. We'll be back. First and ten. That's our story. Anthony Thompson. Romero Price makes the hit on the play. He's one of the ten sophomore starters I was talking about for Illinois. Jim Grabowski, I wonder if that's part of the reason why Indiana, or rather Illinois, is, is penalized so heavily. And that they've got so many young people in the ballgame, so many young people playing on a full-time basis in a starting capacity for the first time in their collegiate careers. I don't think there's any doubt about it, Wayne. You know, their whole team, 70% of the whole team are freshmen and sophomores. Loss of a yard in that play. Second and 11. AT again. Mark Zipnick wraps him up after a gain of about a yard. The line on defense is fired. They really have done a halfway decent job of stopping the rush on that first series for Indiana where they scored. It was Dave Snell that killed them. Illinois deep 
defense right there. There is the unit. Watch the pursuit now. Well, you see Zitnik, 97, out of his gold guard position, just floating along the line of scrimmage, coming in to make the tackle on Anthony Thompson. Third down, about 10. Schnell. To Turner. Great adjustment by Turner. First down. 24-yard line of Illinois. Marlon Famous made the hit 41-yard pass play. Stephen Jordan was also there. When he came back from the ball, when Turner came back for it, he lost the coverage. Stephon Jordan just lost the ball. He didn't know where it was. You'll see Jordan there has pretty good coverage right now, but he can't find the football. Turner sees it. He cut, stops, picks it up. Great reception by Turner. Let's take another look. Again, you'll see Jordan. Looks like he sees the ball there, but he couldn't stop quick enough. I thought he lost the ball. But anyway, not a very good defensive play by Stephon Jordan. First and ten Hoosiers at the Illinois 24. Anthony Thompson tripped up. Steve Glasson, again, we mentioned he's going to be in and out of the lineup today with that bad ankle. Got a piece of him on the tackle attempt. Well, what, of a couple of yards. What Glasson did well is he took on the blocker. That was Gene Boyd. Glasson read the play, saw it coming at him, took on the blocker of Gene Boyd and just clogged up the hole. Bill Mallory looking on from across the way. Gain of three on that previous play. Second down at seven. Glenn Cobb got over quickly to make the stop on the play for Illinois from the strong safety position. You know, when it looked like they, Illinois had it pretty well defended, there wasn't much of a hole, but whatever is there, that Anthony Thompson finds it. The official continues to cover the ball, trying to keep it uh, dry. It's kind of a misty day, though it appears to be clearing up a little bit right now here. Second to make that to third down. Chris Green got it over to make the read. Snell trying to run the option to the short side of the field. Well defended by the Illini. Fourth down now. Still about... Well, they lost a yard in that play. They mark it back at the 17-yard line. Fourth down at about three yards to go. Stephon Jordan coming off the field, limping. Looks like he twisted his ankle. We're having as much trouble keeping our camera lenses dry as uh, the officials are having keeping the balls dry. 3.46 to go. First half. Pete Stoyanovich is on to try a field goal here. He has been outstanding, as we mentioned. One of the best kickers in the country. 34-yard field goal attempt. He's 3 of 3 from this range. 10 of 12 for the season. Into the wind. A high snap that's dropped. Covered up on the play by Ballyard. Ballyard, the holder. Picked it up and dropped to a knee. Back at the 23-yard line. And that's where the play will stand for Illinois as the Illini take over. Let's, let's look at the snap. Little high, but should have been handled by Bolliard, really. Not a great snap, but one that certainly was catchable. And once his knee hits in college football, the play is over. 3.25 left to go. Indiana still leading by a touchdown back after these words from your local stations. Today's game is being brought to you in part by Ameritech. Ameritech, solutions that work. Smoke Gardner, a, a nose tackle on the Illinois bench. Taken up earlier in the ball game. 325 to go first period of play. Indiana leading by a touchdown. About two or three, make it four yards perhaps on the carry that time for the fullback. Schlereth and Harris respond quickly on the scene. Howard Griffin, the sophomore from Julian High School in Chicago, has had an outstanding season, averaging 5.8 yards per carry. Wayne no hole in that last play. Howard Griffin just put his head down and just drove the pile back. He got almost five yards. Gain of four, second and six. Close to the 
first down across the 30 out near the 33-yard line. Willie Bates, the inside linebacker, responded quickly. Going to get a look at Bates in isolation. Number 81, Willie Bates, the leading tackler on this team. Let's see how he takes on the block there. Pretty good job taking on the block of Schneider and making the tackle. Third down and about a yard to go now. Fighting a line eye in their second offensive possession of the day. Indiana and Coach Bill Mallory, they've controlled the tempo of the ball game thus far. Jeff George. Pinky. First down and a whole lot more into Hoosier territory to the Indiana 40. 26 yard game. Mark Berry made the stop. Third and short situation. The Illini come with the bootleg action. You'll see Finky tight end make the block. Now he slips out in the open area. George sees him. And Jeff Finky makes a great run after this. Look, it breaks that tackle. Maintains his balance. And a big game for the Illini. It takes Mark Berry, 21, coming to make the tackle. Jeff Finky, the sophomore from Casey, Illinois. First down from the 40. Jones on the carry for about three, maybe four. Walt Harris in the interior portion of the defense, along with Jim Sams, the nose guard. Sams missed the first three games of the season with a knee injury. Came back for the Big Ten opener at Northwestern and has played steadily ever since. Played very well for the most part. Second down and six. Indiana leading by a touchdown. Seven nothing. First period of play. Howard Griffith on a quick slant. Griffith just inside the 35 to the 34 and a gain of a couple of yards. Leaves the third down and four. Doug Schlereth, the right tackle, has defensively responded. Wayne, he did a fine job, Schlereth. He was going to be trapped by number 74, Skubitz, but he took on the trap, closed down the hole, not much room for the ball carry to go through. The Illini have scored 63 first quarter points more than any other Big Ten team in the first period. However, they are yet to score with time winding down to this first quarter. Jones with a long setback. Some jumping on the line. It looked like some premature movement offensively. Interior part of the line may have been the right guard. Didn't pick up his hand off the ground, but he made that little bit of motion back. That's enough to be a legal procedure. Instead of third and four, it'll be third and nine. Let's see it again. Watch it right there on the left side of your screen. Third down. That's the right guard. A little motion before the snap. Illinois, one of two on third downs. Again, only the second offensive possession of the day for the fighting Illini. Final 23 seconds, first period. Jeff George in the spread formation. Then Stephen Williams in motion. George under pressure. of the season, his 14th tackle for loss. This is what you call the speed rush, huh? Joe Huff, number 35, matched up against the tackle. Huff too quick for him, gets to the outside, comes in and makes the sack against Jeff George. Time has wound down in this first period of play. End of one period of play. Indiana has a 7-0 lead. Over Illinois, we're going to commercial position number five. We want to let you know along the line, this is commercial position number five here this afternoon. Back in Champaign on a cold afternoon. A bit windy, too, and we've had some misty rain in the offing here. Seems to be clearing up a little bit, and it should be fine for football, hopefully, the rest of the day. Brian Menkow is at a punt formation, a fourth down and long for the Illini. Buford back deep. Buford over the shoulder, catch near the 15. Good move. Out across the 20-yard line. Matt Pater made the stop. 37-yard punt, six-yard return. And again, we apologize for doing our uh, uh, paperwork, so to speak, and making sure that our network stations are, are online with what we're trying to get straightened out here in Champaign. 14-49 left to go. First half play, just the start of things in the second quarter. We'll return to Champaign after this from your local station. This is the Big Ten Television Network. 
Okay, listen up. Oakley here's Billy Man for ball tonight. For three years, okay. Bill Oakley Thank took you. orders. Up the shell plates, it up. But tonight, all the help we get. Are you with he's got to stand up and take charge. You make America work. Here's to you, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. For all the guys who know it's not what you say, but what you do. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski. 14-49 left to go. First half of play. Indiana gets the football for the for third time this afternoon. There is the Illini marching band. First down for the Hoosiers. Just short of the 22-yard line, Indiana territory. Anthony Thompson. I believe that was Mike Hopkins who had a hold of his ankle. John Wachter helped out. So it'll be for Indiana off a gain of eight, second to two coming up. Well, once again, they go to the main man, Anthony Thompson. Toss out of that I formation. Again, a good kick out block by the fullback, Miller. Second down, that's the fullback getting the call. Not enough for the first down. And Indiana will face a third down. Cal Miller on the carry, a little fullback. 5'10", 220. Transfer from Michigan State. Walker made the stop on the play. That, that's Miller's reward for a good block on the last play to give the ball inside. <laughs> the third down now, and about a yard to go. Anthony Thompson has just broken the Indiana record for total yards in a season. Indiana third and about a yard and a half to go. Three and four on third down. Anthony Thompson hit by Glasson. Did not make the first down. Glasson and Greg Conrad. Let's take a look at it here. Great penetration by the Illini. You'll see Brownwell, number 48, coming in on the blitz, gets the penetration, takes on the blocker. Glasson comes in to help out. Good defensive stand by the Illini. That's a case, Wayne, where you call the blitz, and it works. He blitzed right into the hole. That's Eric, the, Eric Brownlow. Top putter in the Big Ten, Tom Bollyard, averaging 43.5 yards per punt. Stephen Williams. From the 28. Not much there. Borte, Indiana filled the lanes very well. Troy Mason, an outstanding special teams coverage fan, in on that tackle. 43 yard punt, just a two yard return. He did well to get two yards. Another break of the action, 12.48 to go in the half. That's our story. Stay tuned to the second half of today's game for the announcement of the Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week. Valvoline will be donating $1,000 to the general scholarship funds of the Big Ten universities. The Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski in Champaign, Illinois. It is windy, cool, overcast. We had missed earlier, and it seems to be clearing up a little bit here. Illinois, first and ten, just short of the Illini 30-yard line. Struggled to haul that one in and in turn lost his footing near the 35 gain of about five. Brad Money arrived at the scene. Good grab by Jeff Pinky. The ball thrown low. If he was thrown on target, Pinky had room to run. Notre Dame out in front of Rice as expected. Georgia leads Florida in the first period of play. And North Carolina over Clemson in the ACC second quarter. That's at Clemson, I think. They call that the belly of death. You ever played there? No. Second down at about five yards to go. Maybe a little less than five. Doug and Meyer, the tight end in motion. Jeff George looking in the air. Got a first down across the 40. I believe that's a Meyer, the tight end. Brad 
money made the stop along with Joe Huff. First down for the Fighting Illini. Well, Indiana continues to play their zones. We talked about attacking in the short hook areas to the tight end. He's going to be a primary receiver. You'll see the tight end in the middle of your screen coming off the block. Now he's going to find an opening. Coming inside between the linebackers, the ball right on target. Good first down for the Illini. First and 10 for the 42, and George again to the air. Through the hands of a Mayan, very nearly picked off by Brad Money. That was Keith Jones, the intended receiver. Jones, who leads this team in reception, should have had that one. You see Jeff George is throwing the ball low. Let's take a look at it. This ball was almost picked off in the hands of Jones. Bobbles almost into the arms of the Indiana defender. All three of the Illinois receptions have been to the tight end. Second and ten. Tipped in the air by Saunders, and it falls harmlessly incomplete. Intended in the flat for Keith Jones. They were setting up the quick screen out to Jones, but a good defensive play by Saunders tipped it away. Terry Saunders, a former tight end, 6'5", 240. You'll see Jones going out in the flat. Jones looks downfield, but his intended receiver is Keith Jones there. Saunders sees it, gets up that pick paw, and knocks the ball away. Now it is third and ten for Illinois from the Illini 42. who got to the quarterback. Jeff George never saw Nolan Harrison coming from his blind side. Great coverage that time by Indiana. You'll see a look at the coverage right here. You got Jones underneath and over on the other side of the field. You'll see Bellamy being covered by Eric Coleman right there. Good coverage by Indiana. Cause that incompletion. Benkhausen hits a shank. Takes an Indiana hop out of bounds in the vicinity of the 40-yard line. And the Hoosiers get good field position off just a 16-yard punt by Brian Menkhausen. 11-24 left to go. First half of play. Indiana still leading Illinois. 7-0 will return after these words from your local stations. Today's game is being brought to you in part by Ameritech. Ameritech, solutions that work. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski. We are in Champaign at Memorial Stadium. 7-0 Indiana. 11-24 to go. First half of play, second quarter. Schnell off the play action on the roll. Got a man open for a first down. Into Illini territory. First and 10 for Indiana. The fullback, Cal Miller. Glenn Cobb made the stop. 18-yard pickup. Henry Jones was also there, along with Marlon Primos. Tough pass for a quarterback when he's a right-hander running to the left side, throwing with the right hand. Found Kel Miller open. Looked like the strong safety cop paid too much attention to Rob Riddle on the out pattern. First down, just outside the Illini 40 for the Hoosiers. 18. Down the sidelines for a first down. Gain of about 13 yards to the 28-yard line. Romero Bryce forced him out of real estate. Anthony Thompson tells his linemen, just get in their face, I'll find a place to get open. And look at, you'll see the blocking out in front. Anthony Thompson sets it up well, takes it to the outside, runs out of real estate, but a good run by A.T. Slot to the near side, bottom of your screen. First down call. with some blocking about nine yards to the 19 yard line Romero Bryce made the stop of the play boy I tell you he has a knack of making just the perfect move off every block and, and really setting him up well as you've been mentioning and he makes the blocker look good doesn't he <laughs> yeah I always like that when you say the runner makes the blocker look good but that is part of it he just runs under such great control little counter play by Indiana set it up that counter step really held the linebackers. Look at those statistics. Should be pointed out Iowa had minus two yards rushing last week. 
Over 500 yards through the air, though. Illinois in a blitz. The fullback, Cal Miller, for the first down to the 16-yard line. Pickup of about three yards. Mel Agee made the stop. First down, Indiana. When you're the defensive coordinator this time, you want to make something happen. You want to come with the blitz, try to get a loss, but you're so afraid to do that because of the ability of Anthony Thompson to find a hole. First and ten. They spot the football to the 16-yard line of Illinois. Indiana leading 7-0. Hoosiers on the drive. Miller and Thompson are the setbacks. Watch it back to the weak side. Cal Miller. Off the play action, the fake to Miller, and passes incomplete. Schnell on a good play action. I had Cal Miller carrying the football on a slant move, and Schnell off the mark on the pass play. Walker had good rush for Illinois. Bootleg action by Schnell, hoping that you'll fool the defenders, but Walker got the penetration. Schnell just threw it away. Bill Mallory, his record, an outstanding job at Indiana. Taking over a program that really was going nowhere in terms of football. Second down. Anthony Thompson. Chris Green came back to make the hit from the corner. Thompson on a gain of about four. From the 12-yard line, Indiana faces a third and six. Well, Wayne, we keep talking about it. Doesn't look like there's a lot there, but somehow Thompson comes up with the yardage. You, you think it's fun being a running back. You get it from all directions. Watch Anthony Thompson take the hit right there. Boom, boom. That's why they're sore on Sundays. Third down. 18. Not going to get the first down. Walker came over to make the initial hit. Well, that's the way you have to defend Indiana. You have to swarm them. Anthony Thompson will break that first tackle. You need all kinds of jerseys around him to, to stop him. Pete Stoyanovich, senior from Dearborn Heights, Michigan, comes on. Never got off his last field goal try. Mishandled snap. This one will be from 28 yards away. The angle to the left side. Tim Jordan on the hold. Stojanovic extends the advantage for Indiana to 10 points. 8.16 left to go. First half of play, and the Hoosiers ride the lead. We'll be back. Eight sixteen left to go. First half of play. Indiana leading ten nothing. Beat Stoyanovich on the field goal. Bill Mattery on the sidelines for Indiana. There's the scoring drive. Eight plays covering forty nine yards. Twenty eight yard field goal by Stoyanovich. Keith Jones and also dropping back deep for the fighting Illini. Illinois, Greg Boysaw, twin safeties to receive this kick. The Wits is going to have to hold the football. That's how much wind is on the floor of the stadium. Looks like that wind is picking up, too, Wayne. It was windy at the start of this ball game. It looks like it's getting a little worse. Looks like it may be uh, changing directions and about to blow in on our side of the stadium. <laughs> in which case, uh, we're in trouble with all these papers around here. Indiana leading 10-0. Stojanovic set to restart the game. Keith Jones about a yard deep. Trying to follow his blocking and didn't really make the right decision coming up the near sidelines. Troy Mason stacked it up. For Indiana, he had some help from his friends. Dave Arne was also there. Yeah, there was an opening back to the inside, but Keith Jones just didn't see it. Now, there's a kid that does everything for this team. Runs back kicks, leading receiver, leading rusher. 
Hoosiers on defense, Illini on offense, and Illinois from their 16-yard line. Close in a hurry. Doug Schlereth slammed the door shut. You know, when you run the draw, you hope that the defenders will attack the quarterback. You'll see Schlereth never gets the penetration, but is in play to make the tackle. He rode off a couple of blockers, Jim, on that play to make the hit. No gain, second and ten. Maybe the offensive lineman's fault. Well, he's supposed to make it look like a pass. Stephen Williams and Mike Bellamy, both out to the top of your screen. Keith Jones has a hole. Not enough for the first down, but he's out to the 23-yard line. Brian DeWitt steered him out of the near side, along with Brad Money. Illinois faces a third down call. Good block out in front of Jones that time by Doug Amaya. We talked that they want to run the football. They want to run it on a three-down series, two out of three. They haven't been effective so far doing that. Third and four. in that short passing area. This time they came with the blitz to put the pressure on George in the second deflected pass of the, for the Illini. Jeff George has missed his last four passes. Menkhausen in punt formation. I believe that was partially blocked or so it sounded. There was. The Illini have it covered, but only at the 37-yard line of Illinois. That was Mike Dumas coming in, making the block. You'll see him here. Brian Makehausen going to make the punt. Now 38 will come into your screen right now, getting a piece of the football. Let's take another look and see how he beats the block. You'll see 48, that's Derek Brownlow coming out to make the block. And Dumas just slips the blocker, comes in. Great play by Dumas getting a piece of that ball. First down, Indiana, just outside the 36-yard line of Illinois. Schnell off the play action to Thompson, has a man open for a first down and more. Buford to the 19-yard line. Marlon Primos and Glenn Cobb corralled him after a 17-yard gain. You're going to see some awfully loose coverage. Number 18, Henry Jones is the defender now just first coming into the picture there on Buford. Just poor coverage by the Illini. Indiana leading 10-0. And on the drive once again near the 19-yard line. Turner in motion. 18. Good pursuit by the Illini defense, in particular Glenn Cobb. But they had it strung out very well. Green was out in front of that play along with Wachter and Glasson. Number seven. Good job by Cobb of making the penetration, forcing Anthony Thompson back to the inside, coming off his block, then making the tackle. Fifth season for Mallory at Indiana. 6-18 left to go, second period of play. Indiana leading 10-0. Loses the handle. The Illini recovered it. You know, the way he set up, Wayne, it almost looked like he wanted to throw the football, but by the fact he bobbed the pitch, he decided against it. Let's take a look at it now. Ball pitched back. Anthony Thompson bobbles it. Right now, it looks like he almost wants to throw the ball. Now he says, no, I can't do that. But by that time, the Illini are in on him, causing the fumble. And that was Mel Agee that falls on it for the fumble recovery and a big play for Illinois. 
There's Bill Agee. First and 10, Illinois. 21 yard line, Illini territory. George. Penalty marker is down. That's Dan Donovan, the tight end. Joe Hoff made the tackle after a gain of about seven yards. Penalty marker down. Nice improvising by Jeff George. Dan Donovan wasn't his main receiver. Offsides, Indiana. The gain was almost eight yards. On the play, let's see what Illinois wants to do here. There's Mark McGowan, the captain. Yeah, he's looking to the sideline, saying, tell me what you want me to do. Offside, defense, decline. Second down. Second down at about two and a half yards to go. They'll take the play. Again, good job by Jeff George. He looked to the left side, couldn't find anybody open. In fact, it only looked like one was, receiver was out there. Finally, he found Dan Donovan back to the right, who slipped off his block, found an open area. Keith Jones follows his blocking for a first down. Out to the 35-yard line. Andre Hall in pursuit. Brian DeWitt's also from the secondary, and Walt Harris on the defensive line strung out the play and made the stop. First down to the 34-yard line. You know, the Illini had great success early in this season running the football. The last couple games, they've had their problems. They've gone to the pass. Jeff George has thrown for 300 yards in, in each of the last three games. First and ten. No chance for that one to be a completion at point-blank range to Keith Jones. And perhaps it was just as well that it wasn't because had Jones caught that football, he would have been decked back in the 25-yard line, and that would have been a loss of nine. When you get that much time back there to throw the football, you've got to credit the secondary. Again, George looking left, down the center to the right, could find no one open, then wanted to dump it to Keith Jones. Jones said, hey, I'm not a receiver. I'm a blocker on this play. Indiana, Jim, gives up a lot of yards through the air, but... People have been saying, I'm asking, is it a bad pass defense? They say, no, they've been giving up just big plays here and there. It's on down and yardage, regular plays. Indiana seems to be very sound throughout defensively. Jeff George just grounded that incomplete. Wayne, what they wanted to do, he wanted to go to a tight end screen to Doug Amaya, but he was being covered. He was covered like a blanket. George saw the defender. He just threw it into the ground. Let's go back and re reload. To reiterate my point on Indiana's defense and maybe clarify a little bit, yeah, they, they get hit with an occasional big play here and there, it seems like. But the problem uh, is is that, again, that destroys it, what your yardage is. Uh, there were two plays for Iowa, but better than 50 yards. You take those plays away, Indiana would have done a much more efficient job statistically last week. Illinois now one of five at third downs. We've seen many cases here today where Jeff George has had time but can't find anybody open in the secondary. He has time once again. Not going to get the first down. How many times? That's at least four times in the first half. Jeff George has had lots of time to look downfield, and it just hasn't been anything open. Well, you know, the other thing we'll, we talked about is the secondary coverage of Indiana. They give up over 220 yards a game, but don't forget, last week, they gave up over 550 yards. That really distorts that average per game. Take that game, throw it out. I mean, uh, you know, Chuck Hartley got hot in the second half. Take that game and throw it out, and Indiana's got a good statistic. Minkhausen will try to get it away now. Boy, it has been a nightmarish afternoon for Brian Minkhausen, the punter for Illinois. Seven-yard punt is all he'll get out of that, but he did well just to get it away. Well, the ball snapped a little high, but certainly, again, it catchable ball should have been caught by Makehouse. now he tries to set up to make the punt and doesn't get a very good one again good field position for indiana we'll return after these words from your local stations back in champaign i'll tell you you've got to keep moving to keep warm on a day like today it is a windy cool afternoon overcast and damp here in champaign first and ten just inside the illini 45 for the hoosiers 
Anthony Thompson. Fine play made by Derek Brownlow. One of the reasons why he leads the Big Ten in tackles. When he gets to you, he usually ramps you up. A good one-on-one -on -one tackle by Brownlow. You know, Wayne, at the beginning of this broadcast, we talked about how important it was for the Illini to have a solid kicking game. Well, they haven't had it. The last three punts by Brian Mankhausen have been 18, 15, and 7 yards. Indiana starting in enemy territory for the second drive in a row. Schnell looks to the air. Got a first down, or so I believe. Buford fell right over the first down marker. Romero Price came up in defense. First down as they mark it near the 34. They are really burning the Illini on those out patterns, especially to Tony Buford. Schnell, under pressure, danced around, found Buford open, and hit him with the strike. Look at those field, go field position comparisons. Some disparity there, to say the least. First and ten, Schnell on the roll. Schnell improvising. Got a man open, and it's intercepted. The pass underthrown. Picked away, I believe, by Henry Jones. But Schnell had Tim Jordan open. If the ball was thrown better, it would have been six points. Let's watch Schnell on the partial rollout, looking right, now running for it. Now he sees Jordan open, but he just can't get enough on the ball. See how far open Jordan is. But Jones reacts to the ball. Again, another look at it. Ball underthrown in terms of an interception for the Illini. That being Henry Jones, number 18. But a better thrown football would have been a touchdown for Indiana. Illinois going against a very strong wind. Puts it in play from the six-yard line. Illinois territory. When you're going into the wind, that's the best way to move the ball. Blow some people out on the line, hand it off to Keith Jones, and he motors for 15 yards in the first down. Walt Harris, the tackle. And a nice hole on the left side of the line eye line. The most room that Keith Jones has seen this afternoon. Let's watch him, number 61. That's post was pulling. Good kick out block on Joe Huff. Big hole. And Keith Jones is into the secondary for a big first down. 21 yard line, first and 10 for the Illini. Keith Jones again gets a good block. Trying to cut it back, and Doug Slareth was there. He's having an outstanding first half of play. Slareth, the senior, right tackle. Out of Biddeford, Maine. Came into the game with 36 tackles and two tackles for losses. Pick up on that play of about five, second and five coming up. You can see the possessions of the Illini. It's been punt, 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 and not very good punts at that. And in the second period, Jim, they've been going into a pretty strong win, to say the least. Second and five. Jeff George just threw it away. He was being blitzed by Mark Ferry, a strong safety. Play set up a little play action. They thought they had everybody blocked, but Indiana came with that strong safety blitz. Mark Ferry was into the face of Jeff George before he could get the ball into a receiver's hand, so he just threw it away. They make the occasional blitz in the secondary. Earlier today, we saw Andre Hall really put some pressure on Jeff George and knock him around a bit. They're not a big blitz blitzing team, but they're a strategic they, blitzing team. They pick their spots. You're absolutely right. George has hit one of his last eight passes. Third down and five. Watch for Huff on the blitz. Here comes Huff. I believe Keith Jones got a hand on that ball and tipped it over the intended receiver, Sean Wax. Again, Jones and Wax in approximately the same area of the field. But again, it was the pressure put on George. He couldn't set up and throw. And Illinois may have been lucky with that deflection because it could have been picked off. Not sure again if Jones or Wax were the intended receiver. Mankhausen. Again a shame. A line I haven't covered, and this one is down at the 49-yard line. And he is really having his problems kicking into the wind. No question about a 25-yard punt. 
What the punter will try to do is get off a lower trajectory on his punt against the wind, obviously, to try to get the distance. But uh, again, the wind has been so strong, and Benkhausen's been under some uh, pressure, and he's had some problems with the snaps. Not a very good snap right here, and I think he's paying attention to the rush. It goes off the side of his foot. You know, he dropped it low. He took it uh, at a low. He, he's, the way he made the drop, he started hit, picking the ball on a lower part of the drop to get a low trajectory, but he just went off the side of his foot. Shell's pass is underthrown, and intended on the play for Anthony Thompson. Steve Glasson had the coverage near the midfield marker. Second and ten for Indiana. Dave Schnell, the junior quarterback from Elkhart, Indiana. Third in the Big Ten in passing. There's the Indiana defense on the sidelines, conferring. Second and ten for the offense. Jumped off sides. Sure it was movement by the offense. It didn't appear so, but Mel A.G. came roaring through the line. <laughs> A.G. saying, hey, that, that right le down. left guard, he moved. He may be right. The way they're setting yeah. things up, the left guard might have moved. Illegal procedure against Illinois. The way Indiana started walking back to the huddle, I thought, well, legal procedure, defense. If body English would have told you anything, it would have told you that the Hoosiers were guilty of the infraction, and the officials whistle Illinois. Now it's a second down and five yards to go. Yeah, Mel Agent trying to argue with the officials, saying I was pulled offside. Dominance by Indiana. A couple of turnovers, though, have thwarted potential scoring drives for the Hoosiers here in this first half. They only lead 10-0 despite the heavy edge statistically in yards. Still, pass under throw. Intended for Buford. Eric Brownlow in the vicinity of the coverage. There's two passes that have really been grounded, you know, just kind of grounded by Schnell. And, you know, Jim Hart, good friend of mine, Long-time National Football League quarterback said sometimes it's almost as hard to throw with the wind as it is to throw into the wind. You let off the ball a little bit, and they start floating on you, so you pull back a little bit more, and it or goes into the ground. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you get the opposite effect. And he ought to know he was a great quarterback. Schmell has missed his last three, six of eleven in the passing department. Third down and five. Lots of time. Intercepted by Romero Price. Boy, bad decision by Dave Snell. He couldn't find a receiver open. He had time to throw. Then it looked like he was going to run out of the pocket. Just threw the ball up for grabs. Second interception, third turnover in the first half for Indiana. Let's look at Snell looking downfield. Can't find him. He feels the pressure. Now he's going to run. He steps up and throws the football. He should have just eaten it right there. Tim Jordan, apparently the intended receiver, or so it would appear. Illinois yet to commit a turnover. Indiana's committed three, and that's one of the reasons why they only lead 10-0 instead of maybe 17. Illinois offense has been in its own territory much of the afternoon. Screen pass, quicker, with some blocking. I tell you, he had number 69. Tim Simpson out there in front of the play, and Simpson didn't hit anybody. Mark Berry made the stop. Brad Money was also there. Yeah, one of the reasons Tim Simpson didn't hit anybody is because Griffin didn't set it up. He just took off and outran his blocker. Good point. Second and three. First down. Oh, did Keith Jones drop it? Yes, he did. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's two Keith Jones's drop. This one, he wanted to run with the football before he looked it in. Third and three coming up. Minute 28 to go. And again, the Illini going into the wind here in the second period of play. They trail 10 0. Three receivers in the game. Wax and Williams to the top of your screen. Bellamy to the bottom. Tried to thread it through the coverage, and a penalty marker is down. Brad Money was right there, and they may have pass interference on the play. Well, that's what they're going to call, Wayne, as you said. Money right there going for the interception. 
The officials feel that he went over the back of Keith Jones. Let's take a look at it. This is Jeff George out of the shotgun formation looking for the turn in to Keith Jones, 46. Now let's see, does he, yeah, he goes over the top. Good call by the official. Got there in the bump a little early too. First down at the 41 yard line. Now they're gonna mark it at the 40. Bill Mallory a little distressed of the way this first half is ending. Minute 24 to go, first half of play. George being blitzed by Hall. Howard Griffin. Stops the clock with a minute 15 to go. Out to the 46-yard line. Dumas ran him out of real estate. Joe Huff was also there. An exciting five-yard gain on the play. Make it six as they spot it right at the 46-yard line. Well, it looked like Howard Griffin made, missed the inside. Hole looked like he could have picked up big yardage, but I guess he was thinking about getting out of bounds, stop the clock. Hey, I'll tell you, Andre Hall had Jeff George buried back inside the 35, Jim. They did well to get what they got. Second out of four. Keith Jones for the first down, unable to get out of bounds. The Illini still have three timeouts remaining, a little over a minute to go. Eric Coleman made the tackle along with Brad Money. They stopped the clock to move the change. Illinois has a play called already. They'll snap the ball as quickly as possible. Looked like some movement. Penalty markers are down. They hold up the action. Left side of the offensive line of the Illini made the jump. And apparently they're going to wave off the flag. Do it again with 62 seconds to go. When it looked like Joe Huff, the outside linebacker, was coming, and the left tackle set up. Now, I don't know if Huff was across the line of scrimmage or, or if the left tackle jumped too soon, but the officials figured, well, I think what, they couldn't figure it out either. And of course, they lost seven seconds off the clock unless the officials reset the clock. I do not believe they're going to do that. The Illini had 69 seconds to go in that first play when that play was made, and apparently, yeah, they're going to put the time back on the clock. They're going to put six seconds back on the clock. That would give them 68 seconds left to go. The officials conferring with Bill Mallory. Time left. First half. There, Jim Sams came in quickly, or Willie Bates, I should say, came in quickly to make the hit on the play. Bates, the linebacker, filled that hole well, gain of about three yards. Second and seven. Illinois has a timeout called with 59 seconds to go. They have two timeouts remaining by our count. Jeff George, John Makovic on the sidelines. 59 seconds left to go, first half of play. Indiana leading 10 0. Hoosiers have been plagued by three turnovers, including two Dave Schnell interceptions. Schnell came into the game with nine interceptions and seven touchdown passes. Bill Mallory is, like I said, concerned of the way this first half is ending up for his team. Illinois has been able to stave off one Indiana drive after another, and they've been dodging one bullet. Exactly. After and now in Illinois may be in a position to put some points on the board. Jeff George probably went to the sideline and said, Coach, I know you were trying to fool him with the run on that last play. It didn't work. The only thing we can do now is put the ball up in the air. Let's stay with it. Indiana's dominated the game from time of possession standpoint, from a yardage standpoint. But their lead is just 10 to nothing. Bellamy to the top of your screen. Williams, number one on the bottom. And man pictured in your screen right there is on wax on the bottom of your screen. Jeff George over the middle. They'll have to take another timeout. Gain of about 10 yards to wax, and apparently Illinois is going to try to set up without taking another timeout. Willie Bates made the tackle along with Mark Ferry. 
Illinois just short of the first down? No. They're calling for the chains, I believe. Yep. So Illinois gets a break right there. They stop the clock. Jeff George will convene a huddle now. You'll see again, George has time to throw the football now to rifles it right there to the tight end. And that's what Indiana is doing. They're giving you the, well, they're not even giving you the short stuff. They're putting five underneath, two or three deep. If they give up anything, they just will give you the eight, nine yard pass, but you're not going to get something deep on us. Illinois just short of the first down. All right, the Illini now have been able to huddle without calling a timeout, without getting into the hurry up type offense. Third down for Illinois coming up. Third and less than a yard. Keith Jones got the first down inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. Illinois will have to burn another timeout to stop the clock with 44 seconds to go. Not going to do it, Wayne. Nope. They're going to go right to it. The, again, the, stop, the clock stops briefly as they have to reset the chains. Jeff George has a play called. Got a man open, Howard Griffith. Jeff George has passed completely. Gain of about seven or eight yards. Mike Dumas made the play. Does Illinois have another play call? No, they've nope. taken a timeout. They burned another timeout. One timeout remaining. 33 seconds left to go. They have driven to the 27-yard line of Indiana. Well, now Illinois has to save that timeout. No matter what happens, you got to save it to get in position for if they have to kick a field goal, touchdown, whatever. But they got to save it just in case they don't get into the end zone so they can set up for the field goal attempt. Again, the Illini going into the wind here in the second period of play. Coming up on a second down at three. 27-yard line of Indiana. 10-0. Hoosiers on top. 33 seconds to go. First half of play. That's the timeout story. Going to be tough on the field goal kicker, Doug Higgins. He'll be kicking into a pretty strong win. They want to get it as close as they can if that's the way they have to go. And Higgins is a type of kicker that gets great height right away. And that will, the win will affect his kick probably more than it would a Stoyanovich kick. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Get George under pressure. Down it goes. Mark Ferry untouched on the blitz. Strong safety. And that takes Illinois pretty much out of field goal range considering the win factor. They talked about strategic blitzing once again. Indiana came in. Upcoming in a hurry on the blitz. And now Illinois is out of Indiana territory. Two big sacks by the Hoosiers. Nolan Harrison was also there. But Joe Huff, as time winds down in this first half of play, so the Hoosier defense finishes in a flurry and preserves a 10-point lead for the Hoosiers, who have struggled a bit offensively in terms of holding on to the football with three turnovers that have killed drives in this first half of play, drives that were deep in Illinois territory. End of one half complete, Indiana has a 10-0 lead over the Fighting Illini of Illinois. We'll return to Champaign with our halftime activities after these words. Today's game is being brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there is only one light beer, Miller Lite. And by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? This game is being brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Aids for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Buick and your local Buick dealer. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. And by Mr. Goodrich. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodrich. No one. George getting set to lead the Illini offense here in the second half of play when they get the football. There's the quarterback comparison. Two of the finest quarterbacks in the Big Ten Conference and Dave Schnell smarting from those two second period interceptions. Illinois kicks off to Indiana to start the 
second half of play. Rod Turner, the principal's deep back. Field position comparison, it was Indiana holding a heavy edge there. Higgins with the window is back, it's off a high kick. Darrell Eddings at the 15 on a short kick. Good coverage by the Illini. Eddings brought down near the 25-yard line. Mike Hopkins uh, penetrated to make the hit. So it'll be first down for Indiana at the 25-yard line. Here comes Dave Schnell. It is a cold, windy day, damp day, overcast here in Champaign. It was misty rain in the first period. It kind of cleared up a little bit in the second period. But it is cool and damp nonetheless. First down for Indiana at the 24. Anthony Thompson. Broke a tackle or two. Wachter hit him initially on the play before being brought down. Zitnik had a piece of him. And Henry Jones came over to cover. Once again, though, Wayne, good blocking by the in Indiana interior by the line. You'll see the man right there, number 64, Tim Reggie, one of the key guys of that offensive line. Gain of six, second down and four. Short of the first down by a little less than a yard across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Chris Green made the hit. We've said it over and over again, but he does such a good job of stretching that defense, threatening outside, taking back inside. And if you overplay that, he'll dip it to the outside and he may be gone. I tell you, you know, again, they're calling for the change on a measurement. We mentioned Anthony Thompson had 84 yards in the first half of play and we mentioned they did a good job of containing him that comes out to a little over what 168 yards uh, overall yeah. in the ball game but when you're talking about anthony thompson that's uh, that's a pretty good job to contain him to that kind of running well a little under his average for carry coming into the game he's averaged 4.8 yards every time he's run the football in the first half he was just over four yards and illinois playing without their starting nose tackle mo gardner was out with an ankle injury quarterback sneak they picked up the first down out close to the 35 yard line be interesting to see what kind of an offense uh, indiana tries in this second half of play they seem to open things up a little bit more in that second period after running the ball with thompson uh, the majority of the time of the first period they open things up a little bit as indiana as illinois tightened down on thompson defensively indiana went to the air and schnell was picked off a couple of times that's why they're so dangerous if you put an eight nine man front and up there to stop Thompson. Schnell can throw the football. Schnell came in. Number three in Big Ten passing efficiency. Schnell still has it. Popped up by Anthony Thompson. It's up for grabs. The Illini may have it on the far side. Although I don't believe anyone was able to haul it in before it went out of bounds. Well, did you notice, Wayne, that... The ball popped into the foot of the official, and he looked like he kept it in bounds. Now watch, here's the ball popping loose. It hits the official, and it stays in bound. Now let's see if anybody, Anthony Thompson, trying to pull it in, but the Illini try to cover it. The ball floats out of bounds. It's Indiana's football. No one able to retain possession before the ball went out of bounds. It goes back to the offense. Gain of three on the play, second and seven. Thompson is four yards short of the first down and on a gain of three. Let's take a look at Brownlow. This is a great job by Brownlow in taking on the block. You'll see 48, top of your screen, taking out the block of the fullback Boyd. Not a very good block by Boyd, but Brownlow avoiding that blocker, making the tackle. Got him by the back of the shirt and <laughs> just kind of yanked him down. Third down and four for Indiana. First drive of the second half. by the swarming Illini. Mel Agee led the way. Here's a look at the linebacker play. You'll see Glasson coming into the play. Taking 
taking out a blocker. Part of the tackle. Now watch hit by Brownlow. Boom. <laughs> That's why quarterbacks are sore in the Big Ten. <laughs> Fourth and three. Henry Jones, the up back, back deep, along with Stephen Williams. There's Bollier. Stephen Williams, number one. Ball takes an Illini hop and is down by Indiana. 32-yard punt. Illinois will start first and 10 in the vicinity of their 28-yard line. We've got a break of the action back in these from your local stations. Wayne Larrabee, Jim Grabowski. That's the story as you look over the shoulder of one of the uh, fighting Illini uh, defenders and Coach John McEvick standing right in the middle of the picture there. It is 10-0 Indiana, 12-18 to go, third period of play. And possession number one offensively for Illinois in the second half from the 27 on a first and 10. Griffin and Jones, the running back tandem behind Jeff George. Keith Jones slanted toward the middle and Jim Sams, the nose guard, was there to stack it up. Got a yard or two, second and eight. You see one of the differences, I think, between Keith Jones and Anthony Thompson. Anthony Thompson will stretch your defense. Jones makes his decision a little quicker than Thompson does. Jeff George kind of keep those hands well oiled. Jones had some blocking off the left side, but Mark Ferry, I'll tell you something, Jim, they've done a lot more blitzing than I expected the Indiana defense to do coming into the game. Ferry's been in the offensive backfield more than the defensive backfield, the strong safety. Exactly, Wayne. I think Indiana defensive coordinator th said it was going to be a pass play. They came with the strong safety blitz, and Mark Ferry was there to get in on the tackle. When they blitz that strong safety, does that mean man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary? In most cases. Third down and four for Illinois. Pinky in motion, the tight end. Jeff George has time initially. Oh, very nearly intercepted by Brad Money. He has had three potential interceptions. Schlereth put some heat on the quarterback. But again, the coverage had to be good downfield, Jim. Primary receiver was Jeff Finke. He went in motion to the left, then to the right, and they're looking for him. You see Finke right to the left of your screen, turning back to the inside, looking for the football. Watch money, cut in front. Almost picked it off. He just read the play. That's a tendency thing, Wayne. They figured that's where they're going, to the tight end, and we'll overcover it. Mankhausen barely got that one away. It's a good roll. The wind aided that punt, but boy, I tell you, he was up against it the entire second period of play. He deserves a break like that. Well, I think what Indiana's going to do, though, is they're going to rush him because awfully slow getting the ball off. 58-yard punt, first down, Indiana. When we resume, we'll be back. Coming up next week, our final game of the regular season on the Big Ten Television Network, the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Chuck Hartley got hot in the second half last week in Bloomington and threw for better than 500 yards on the game against Indiana a week ago. We're going to look at Hartley one more time. First down, worst field position to start a drive today for Indiana. Anthony Thompson gets it out across the 10 to the 13-yard line. Marlon Primos made the stop on the play. Look at the last four Indiana possessions. Three turnovers and the punt. Field position, not bad. Dave Schnell missed last year's Illinois game after undergoing an emergency appendectomy just prior to kickoff. Yeah, their quarterback, Dave Premi, came in and tore apart the line. Yeah, that he did. Out of the eye formation on a second down. Back to Anthony Thompson. Schnell on the roll. Hit as he threw the right side of the pass under throw. Wachter, the man who hit the quarterback. And it's a third down. I'm sure Bill Mallory said, no, 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 eat the football. In the area where Schnell threw the football, there were only two blue jerseys. A look over the shoulder of Bill Mallory there. Third and six coming up. 
I am really impressed with the inspired effort defensively by Illinois. That's the only reason the Illini are in this football game right now. They have not really been able to get anything consistent going on offense. Yet offensively, their credit, they have not committed a turnover yet. Third down, Indiana. Six yards to go. Anthony Thompson lost it. Got it back, but a loss of yardage back near the 10-yard line. And have, having trouble getting the handle of the football. Looks like it's right in his stomach. He just flat dropped it. And now he's having difficulty getting it on the ball. And he finally falls on it. But the Illini will get the football in good field position. Ball, oh, you're kicking into the wind. Nearly had it blocked. Stephen Williams lets it hit. Territory with this offensive possession. 32 yard punt. It is the best field position to start a drive for Illinois today. They're going to get back into this ball game, Jim Krabowski. It looks like now is the time. Well, it's that old thing, you know, you just let the other team hang in there, hang in there, and they can come back and bite you. The Illini really outplayed in the first half, except for turnovers, and now they get their best field position. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Plus the wind to his back. Jeff George, a quarterback, ducks in under his center. Keith Jones, a sliver of an opening up the middle, and good leg drive by Jones inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Schlereth arrived at the scene along with Mark Berry. Wayne, you called it right, boy. Great leg drive. Someone on the back of Keith Jones, but he kept those legs pumping. Take a look at this leg drive by Keith Jones. Not much of a hole, but look at those legs. Keep pumping. Keep pumping. Jeff Finke on the wing, bottom of your screen. Keith Jones cuts it back. Penalty markers all over the play. They hold up the action. Did he run out of time on the play clock? I don't believe he did. It didn't seem like he did. Illegal procedure, the call against Illinois. As we mentioned, Illinois averages about eight penalties a game, most of the Big Ten. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure. I'm sure the Illini felt if they were going to win this football game, they have to play the best they played this year. And it has to be error free. It hasn't been that way for them. John Makovic made that statement to us last night. the penalty story. Second down now and about 10 yards to go. Quick hitter, Howard Griffin. He got about six. Willie Bates on the tackle for in Indiana. Could have been a bigger gain if it wasn't for the play of Willie Bates. Quick trap right over the middle. You see Simpson pulling, turning upfield, making the hit on Brad Money, number 53, and Bates coming from the offside, getting Griffin around the ankles. Otherwise, that would have been a first down. Third down, give him seven on the pickup. Third and three. Griffin stumbles for the first down, I believe. Down to the 31 is where they'll spot it. First down. Brad Money made the stop. Watch it head on from the end zone. You get the view of what the defenders have. Now, Griffin's seen a little bit of an opening. You see the forward lean he had? He almost lost his balance. Well, he did, but not in time before he got the first down. He felt that he was really going to get hit as he broke through that little bit of a hole. He didn't, so he didn't. He had so much momentum, he couldn't maintain his balance. It, Illinois doing what they had hoped to be able to do, and that is run on first and second down, and even on third down if they had to, against Indiana. Jeff George looks to the air, has time. Got a man open. Bellamy, touchdown! was right where it had to be. Touchdown, dude. Mike Bellamy. 
be. They can make it a three-point game right here. Higgins on the extra point try. Let's take a look at it, Wayne. That ball was thrown at the only place it could have been. He's going to Bellamy all the way deep. He's looking center. Now he's going back to the Bellamy. Bellamy gets behind Andre Hall and DeWitt right in the hands. Good reception, good throw by Jeff George. The fighting Illini have hung in all afternoon, and now they're back to within three with 7.21 to go in the third. Back after this from your local station. We're going to take another look at that touchdown to Mike Bellamy. You'll see Indiana in a two-deep type of zone defense, but a man-on-man -on, -man on the corners. So Andre Hall knows he's got help deep, but the safety, Brian DeWitts, didn't get over. Andre Hall got beaten, the ball well thrown into the hands of Mike Bellamy. Here's another look at it from the low angle. Well, let's go back to live action. Kickoff, this is Rob Turner. Out to the 20-yard line. Here's a low angle shot. Again, Keith George, I mean, Keith jo Jeff George looks downfield to Bellamy. Look at the good reception right in the hands of Bellamy. Good concentration by Mike Bellamy. Only the second reception by an Illinois wide receiver today. Mike Bellamy had a 31 yard touchdown reception. Now, Indiana going against the wind here in the third period of play. And the momentum obviously has shifted in favor of Illinois. That is the scoring drive. Didn't take long. to take it himself. Got out to the 25-yard line. Mel Agee in pursuit. And again, Jim, how many times today have we seen on both sides the downfield coverage? Illinois has been able to complete two passes to wide receivers. That means good coverage in the secondary. The second pass, though, broke for the 31-yard uh, touchdown. That's kind of, in a nutshell, what has happened to Indiana defensively in the passing game. They play so well for so long, and then, boom, something big happens, and they're out. Same thing for Illinois today. They have been tight in the secondary, and it puts some pressure on Snell. Second down and four. Nothing there. Is, is that a fired up Illini defense? Sean Turner and Glenn Cobb led the way, stopping Anthony Thompson near the line of scrimmage. Third down and a little bit more than five yards to go. Stay tuned to the end of today's game with Jim and I will be naming the Budweiser player of the game. Budweiser player of the game coming up after today's contest. Indiana's 5 of 12 on third down conversions. They are third and down and a long five yards to go. Buford to the top of your screen. Now you get a look at the quarterback. Dave Schnell. Tom Bolliard comes on in punt formation, and I dare say the Illini believe now they can win. If there was any doubt before, there is no doubt now. Blue and orange can win. And they're playing like it. Almost blocked. Stephen Williams lets it go. Takes a Hoosier bounce inside the 40 to the 37-yard line, and Illinois will start in their own territory near the 37 to 38 yard line. That was a 38 yard punt into the wind, not bad at all. Rick Boyce almost got there to block that punt, number 22. When you talk about the difficulty punting the football, it's also great difficulty receiving the ball. Let's watch the punt once again. You'll see coming from the outside, Boyce getting in very close to making the block. First down now for Illinois, just short of the 38-yard line. Jones out to the 41, and gain of about three or four. Brad Money on the stop along with Mark Ferry. Ferry and Money have been two very active defenders for 
Indiana today. You can hear the pads pop. Keith Jones, number 36. Very strong runner. Wax and Bellamy to the top of your screen. There's Jeff George. Jones. Gets the first down, or he's very close to it. Out across the 45 near the 48-yard line. Brad Money again made the stop of the play. Victor Bole Williams is in the offense as the fullback. He is an excellent blocking fullback at the point of attack. You could just feel the enthusiasm building on the Illini side. Keith Jones on the last run ran with more determination than we've seen in the first half. First and 10, Illinois. Wax top of your screen. On the bottom, number one is Stephen Williams, the wide receiver. Penalty markers hold up the action. Too much time. So this will slow up the offensive forward progress, at least temporarily. Let's hurt the Illini this afternoon, just when you seem they get the drive going. There's a penalty that gets them into a, a first and long, second and long situation. That's their fifth penalty in the afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. First down passing for Jeff George. Well, they've got to play you pretty much straight up on first down, don't they, defensively? Sure do. Makes a difference. First and 15 now. Bellamy got a hand on it, and he was open in the middle of the defense. Pass had a little bit too much on it. Brian DeWitt's the defender down there. George had good protection again, Jim. You're exactly right. Uh, Jeff just got too much on the football. But he, Jeff George didn't know it, but he was getting pressure again from the outside. Uh, Joe Huff who is really kind of their, their primary blitzing linebacker, does a great job of blitzing. He didn't come as much last week uh, against Iowa. He didn't come on the blitz that often, but today he's making the move with great regularity. Second and 15, Keith Jones. Not much there. Got what he could. Out to about the 47 on a gain of three. Eric Coleman on the near side made the hit. Eric Coleman. It's interesting what they do with Huff. Again, against Iowa, he played all... We saw a lot of him in pass coverage in that first half against uh, Iowa last week, looking at the films. And here today, we've seen him coming on the blitz a lot more often than he did last week. Third down. Illinois, 3 of 11 on third down. Third down, about 11 yards to go. A little bit more than 11. Recovery by Coleman, the senior from Harvey, Illinois. Well, I'll tell you, Jeff George did not step and throw with this football. Look, he kind of throws it off the back foot. He could have gotten more on it. You'll see that Bellamy has got Coleman beat. But Coleman comes in and gets his hand and deflect it away. Again, let's look at the coverage. You'll see Coleman and Bellamy at the bottom of your screen. A post pattern to Bellamy. He's got Coleman beat right there. A ball really underthrown. Menkhausen, fair catch signal made by Buford, and he makes the catch on a knuckleball type of kick near the 21-yard line. 32-yard punt. Indiana will go from there at the 21. Break of the action. We're coming back to Champaign. It's a tight ball game in the third period. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski, and I'd say another, what, 55,000 others on hand here? Kind of wish we were down there, Jim, instead of up here. First down near the 21-yard line of Indiana for the Hoosiers. Thompson. Boy, again, they strung it out very well. Romero Bryce, the principal defender, but I'll tell you, he had some help. Chris Green out in front of that play, turning it around, and of course, the guy who leads a big ten of tackles, Derek Brownlow, also in the neighborhood. Was the pursuit that got him, Wayne, because the counter motion got the linebackers going one way, and I thought the play was going to develop much better for Indiana because they had Fryer out in front. You got Fryer and Anthony Thompson, Thompson you expect to get more yardage. Seven carries, 15 yards in the second half. 
for 18. And 84 in the first half. Johnson again. Tough yardage as he slanted up the gut that time. Steve Glasson brought him down short of the first down, and Indiana is in a third down and about two yards to go type situation. Once again, though, Anthony Thompson runs under great control. Play going to go to the left. He cuts it back to the right. It's only because he has such control over his body. Thompson, you have to understand that this kid is number two in the Only nation in rushing. Offense decline. Fourth down. So although he has close to 100 yards in almost three periods of play, Illinois has done an outstanding job of containing him. Outside of that first drive, what? He had how many yards of the first drive? 42 of, the, of his yards came on the first drive of the game. Win safety's back deep. Ball, you're down in punt formation. Oh, again at this time. Into the end zone. Out of the end zone for a safety. And the Illini are back to within one. right there. That's Patrick Donnelly. The son of a former All-American here at Illinois, George Donnelly. You mentioned a couple of weeks ago on one of our telecasts, it's kind of hard for you to watch that young man play, knowing you played with his dad. Let's take another look at it. You'll see Donnelly coming in from the left, leaping in front of him, Bullyard to block the ball. And it's a mad scramble to fall on the football. No one could get the handle on it, and it goes out of bounds, but it's a safety for Illinois. And that shirt tightens up the ball game even more. Obviously a break for Indiana that it went out of bounds. It could have been six for Illinois, and they would have the lead. As it is, it's a 10-9 ball game now. And as I mentioned, you know, so much of football is belief. You talked to this uh, Illinois team uh, months ago. Being an All-America here at Illinois, had an opportunity to visit with some of the folks. Uh, and you were mentioning that a lot of football, a lot of the success of football has to do with believing you can win. And I don't know. Indiana came in ranked 18th in the country. There may have been some doubt for the Illini early in the ballgame, but they believe now they can win. Henry Jones makes the recovery on that punt at the 46-yard line. Mike Dumas covered on the play in terms of making the tackle. But now, if there was any doubt, so much that there was any doubt, but if there was some doubt in the minds of the Illini coming into this game that they could win and play with this team, that doubt has been erased by this actually second quarter and now the third period where they've achieved some success. Well, they had to take advantage of it in this quarter because they had the win at their back, and the field position they've had has been excellent. From the 46, Jeff George and company. Complete. Boy, they're working on Bellamy. Andre Hall had the coverage. Well, Hall had deep coverage that time. He didn't buy any fakes by Bellamy. He took that deep third of the field. Two minutes, one second left to go with third period of play. Indiana leading Illinois 10 to 9 now. Second and 10 coming up for the Illini. But you notice how they went for it all on the first play. George is one of five in the passing department of this half with that one completion, 31 yards. 
for a touchdown to Mike Bellamy. Griffith and Jones, the running backs, on second down. Keith Jones. Not sure if he got back to the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard in that swing pass. Again, George is being blitzed pretty hard. Joe Huff made the tackle. Schlereth on the uh, pressure. That was a great job of reacting back to the ball by Joe Huff. He went into his drop area. He read that slip screen, reacted back to the ball so well to make the tackle. Greg Schneider, the left tackle on offense, steps out of the ball game. He had an ankle injury earlier this year. Shaken up again. He's replaced in the lineup. And now Illinois facing a third down and about 11 yards to go from the 45. Could not hang on near the 38-yard line. Mark Ferry had the coverage. The pass kind of did that skip to him. It looked like it might have taken a hop almost before it got to him. Well, I'm not sure if it skipped or not, but he did. George did have wax open, just underthrown. And once again, it looked like Jeff George didn't step to throw the football. Brian Menkhausen, a former quarterback, on a punt formation. Tony Buford in single safety. Penalty marker is down. Buford makes the play at the 20. Gets by Donnelly. Buford demonstrating why he's one of the best in the country in returning punts. 13-yard return off a 35-yard punt. Kurt Gregus made the tackle. Penalty marker down. Back near the midfield marker. Making the tackle for the Illini. Offsides against Indiana. And I'm sure the Illini will repunt the ball. Why not? And return out to the 33-yard line would give Indiana some of their best field position of the half. Take a look at what else is going on around the country. Penn State out in front of Maryland, third period of play. Offside! Rutgers and Pitt going battle, and Pitt holding a 10-point lead in the third period. Syracuse leading the Navy. The ACC, North Carolina, trailing Clemson. NC State trailing Virginia at halftime. Houston and Texas underway. Houston doing a number on the Longhorns. Minute 18 to go here. Third period of play. 10 to 9. Indiana leading Illinois. Line of scrimmage to the midfield marker on fourth down. About six yards to go. Menkhausen in front formation. With the wind to his back. Seemed to shank it. And it sails out of bounds. At the 30-yard line, where Indiana will go first and 10, just a 20-yard punt. Point in the first half, Brian Mankhausen had six punts. He averaged just over 24 yards a punt on each of those. This time with the win, he got up a, a shank. What, of course, Indiana would have started on the previous play had that penalty not been taken at the 33-yard line. They take the five-yard penalty, and Indiana still gets a start on the 30-yard line. That's the three position difference. they've had in this first half. In the second, second half, half right. Seven. Turner in motion. Anthony Thompson. Glenn Cobb trying to string him up. Gets help on the play from Chris Green on the far side, and Anthony Thompson still made something out of it. Got about four yards on it. He showed on that play, he also has some speed. Watch the way this play develops. Threaten the inside, now you just string it out to the outside. No place to turn in. I think Anthony Thompson was going to go outside all the way. He made his decision early, and it's a foot race. Glenn Cobb finally gets to bring him down. Second and six. Gary Gooden in motion to the near side. Anthony Thompson, big hole. For a first down. That's the most running room he's had in the second half. Chris Green got over to cut him down. Out across the 40 to the 42 yard line, where Indiana will go first and 10. Along with the great quickness, Anthony Thompson has good vision. He saw the hole open back to the right side. Got a problem with that clock. A minute 99 <laughs> seconds to go. <laughs> Is that the metric system? Yeah, that may be the metric system of time, right? 
<laughs> Didn't they do something to the clocks last weekend? Maybe that's what messed it up. <laughs> All right, when we uh, when we straighten out the clock situation, Indiana will go first and ten near the 42-yard line. You've heard of the home timekeeper, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> they want to keep the win a little longer. Is that what they want? Minute 59 now, apparently, is the discussion we hear. They have reset the clock. Anthony Thompson, first half there. This is the story in the first half for him. Now, take a look at this. Second half. Ooh, big difference there. But again, in that first half, I believe on that initial drive, Anthony Thompson, nine carries, 42 yards on the 73-yard uh, scoring drive to a touchdown by Indiana. That was the initial drive of the game. Here's Since an, then, they've done a good job of containing it. Here's a give you an idea how important Anthony Thompson is to Indiana. His rushing attempts, he has 58% of the rushing attempts, 56% of the rushing yards in this football team. Less than a minute to go, third period. On first down, Anthony Thompson again being strung out. Brownlow and Green were there, along with a few others for Illinois. Mel A.G. and Steve Glasson strung it out. Number 48, Derek Brownlow, has greeted Anthony Thompson many times this afternoon. Two nope. of the best in the conference. No gain. Second down to 10. Brownlow, nine solo tackles and three assists so far in the game. Second and 10. made the stop 10 yard gain and five seconds left to go well that was his third period that was a well-thrown football romero bryce had the underneath coverage had it co covered pretty well but the ball rifled in by dave Schnell. take a look at it now Schnell's going to buford all the way look at the coverage right there bryce stumbled a little bit and lost to the receiver time winding down in this third period of play and the three complete indiana Flinging to a 10-9 lead over Illinois. Back after this. From your local station, this is the Big Ten Television Network. Back in the glory days of the early 1970s, Boston's pro hockey team was known as the Bees. The Big Bad Bruins. And today, in 1988, they're bigger and badder than ever. Following a brilliant season in which they burst into the Stanley Cup final, the Bees are back. Back in all their glory and back on Nesson. The Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week is Iowa senior quarterback Chuck Hartley. Last week in a losing cause against Indiana, Hartley completed 44 of 60 passes for 558 yards and three touchdowns. 44 completions. 558 yards is the second highest in Big Ten history for a single game. Our congratulations to Chuck Hartley, this week's Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week. There are the uh, Euchre seats. Boy, I tell you, you could make snow up there. First and ten near the 47-yard line of Illinois. Schnell still has it. to be in a position to pick it away. That ball hung up there, Wayne, allowing Jones to come back to the football. You'll see Jones coming in there, just tipping the ball slightly. Rob Turner did get his hands on it. That could have been a mistake by Jones. He misjudged that football a little bit, trying to go for the interception, but again, the ball did hang. Second and 10 for the Hoosiers. Turner in motion. 18. Didn't quite make the 45-yard line. Gain of two or three. Mark Zitnick, who's done an outstanding job in place of the injured Mo Gardner at nose tackle, arrived initially along with Glenn Cobb coming in from his strong safety spot. Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator of the Illini, has to feel awfully proud of this defense. They're facing the number one offense in the Big Ten. Did he come down and play? Yes, he did. In 
inside the 35, near the 33-yard line. Outstanding body control by Buford on the reception of 13 yards, and Bryce forced him out. When they need the big first down play, they go to Tony Buford on those out patterns. Now let's watch it, how he goes up for the football, stays in bounds, both feet. Excellent body control. This is an important drive for Indiana, leading by a point. This is their most sustained drive of the second half. Seventh play coming up. First down from the 32. Turner in motion. Anthony Thompson had a sliver of an opening and picked up about five yards. Sean Turner on the stop. Let's take a look at the blocking in the line for Indiana. See, their whole job is just to stay in the face of a, of a defender. And Anthony Thompson will find whatever hole's there. And he has the control to do that. He cuts inside. That's Sean Turner making the tackle. Second down and about five. Thompson. Brownlow made the stop along with Steve Glasson, two yards short of the first down to the 25-yard line. Third and two coming up, gain of a couple. Once again, it looked like the line I had it stacked up, but the running ability of Anthony Thompson found some little bit of a hole, and then his strength. As we said earlier, he's an awfully strong runner, too. Hoosiers are 6 of 15 on third down. Third and two at the line. Thompson breaks free for a first down and then some to the 19-yard line. The tremendous strength, as you just mentioned, Jim, of Anthony Thompson never more clearly on display than on this particular play. You'll see it here. If you hit him high, he'll just bounce you back. Look at one shot, two, three, four. Takes the fourth guy to knock him down. From the 19. Penalty markers down. Looked like the right side of Indiana jumped a little quick. May have been the tight end, Tim Jordan. That's what it is, going against Indiana. But give, give credit to this Indiana team, boy. What points? Both start. They had a lot of things Both going things. against them in the second half, but the offense got together and said, we need a march, and they're doing the job. They are marching. It'll be first and 15 at the 24-yard line for the Hoosiers. Dave Schnell, who struggled through the second period of play, has come out and made some plays here in this second half to keep this drive going. Second and six coming up. Brownlow made the stop along with Henry Jones. Dave Schnell is 6'1". He looks a little taller than that. He's a solid 210 pounds. A junior, as I mentioned, from Elkhart, Indiana. And he'll do whatever you ask him. You want me to throw the ball? I'll find Buford open on the sideline. You want me to run the football on the option? I'll do it. Came into the game. Second leading rusher for Indiana. A distant second, I might add, to Anthony Thompson. Second and six. Maybe three yards down to the 12 yard line. Mel Agee in the middle of that defense stacked it up. Has not been a, a glamorous day for Anthony Thompson. This is one of those uh, take your lunch pail and uh, your thermos to the office type thing. Hey, listen, Wayne, though, you gain 100 yards in any collegiate football game, you're doing a good job. And he's well over 100 yards. Hasn't been an easy 100 have been a glamorous 100 yards. He's had to work for it. Third down. Schnell keeps it himself. And it appears he's got the first down. Marlon Primus got over to make the hit, but not before Indiana goes first and goal. Just outside the Illini 8. You gotta like that young man, Dave Schnell. Gutsy guy. Oh, my God. 
10 44 to go in the ball game indiana leading by a point 10 to 9. first and goal just inside the nine gary gooden in motion anthony thompson swarmed under at the nine yard line Brownlow was there, along with Glasson. And Glasson, as we mentioned on numerous occasions, playing with an injured ankle today. You get down by your own goal line, you got to try to make something happen. You'll see the linebackers coming. Number 41, Glasson, getting great penetration. That's a called blitz. And it, Glasson and Brownlow, those two inside linebackers, in on the tackle. Second and goal from just inside the 10, near the nine-yard line. One wide receiver, two tight ends. Schnell looking to the air. I'm not sure. He might have been going for the tight end and the back end, back line of the end zone, Tim Jordan. But boy, he tried to throw that through a maze of blue. Well, his primary receiver was Jordan, but Schnell saw the coverage. He had time to look the field over. Now, let's look at it again right here. Play action. Schnell trying to look for Jordan. You'll see Jordan at the bottom of your screen waving. Good coverage. Now, he's going back. Jordan turns back to the inside. Glasson had Glasson, a shot at it. Who got a hand on the ball. And another defender crossing in front of the tight end. The intended receiver. Again, though, Schnell had the time to look at Jordan once. Good coverage. Jordan turns back to the inside. If you don't have good protection, you can't run that kind of pattern. Indiana wants a timeout. They're facing a third and goal to go oh, no. just outside the nine. And they take a break with 9.48 to go. Dave Schnell heading over to the sidelines. Athletic Association will be offering an all-position. Fourth period of play with 9.48 left to be played. Indiana 10, Illinois 9 will return after these words from your local stations. Our Big Ten sideline vehicle is provided by Bob Rohrman Motor Sales, conveniently located in Lafayette, Indiana, and Schaumburg, Illinois. 16th play of the Indiana Drive coming up. <laughs> How about that? Yes. Of course, you notice he wears the coat when he comes into the stadium. <laughs> and then Brownlee displays. Third down. Goal to go at the nine. Schnell. It is fourth down. There's a flag on the play, Wayne. The area where the flag was thrown, it's probably going to go against Indiana. You can see Glenn Cobb, seven, signaling that it is going to go against Indiana. Yep, thrown in the middle of the line. Now the question is, do you want to give him another shot at it? Of course, if, again, take a look from the end zone. Again, Schnell has plenty of time to throw the football. He's looking, he's looking. Now he throws it low. He said, if it's not a completion, it won't right. be an interception. Trying to hit the tight end once again. Holding Tim Jordan. Offense. They're down. Illinois is going to try to move him back a little bit. Again, if you turn down the penalty, Pete Stoyanovich, with a wind to his back, has a very short field goal. At least this way, if you can stop them one more time here. Stoyanovich has a much tougher try, much longer try. But he's one of the best field goal kickers in the country. Third down, goal to go situation. Ball back near the 20 yard line. Illinois coming with the blitz. Gonna blitz from the outside. Anthony Thompson back to the 10 yard line. Nothing gained, nothing lost, basically, on the play. Len Cobb, a strong safety. By that I mean this is where Indiana was when Illinois took the penalty. They were at the 10 yard line, facing fourth down. Anthony Thompson got back 10. Shaking up a defender on the play. Can't quite see his number, Jim. I'm not sure who went down. That may be Primos, the free safety. I believe you're right. You can make out through the glasses his name just a bit. Camera angle. It looks like it may be Primos. Fourth down now for Indiana. Pete Stoyanovich is on. Stoyanovich has already today kicked a 28-yard field goal. This will be another in the vicinity of 28 to 27 yards. It looks like they'll spot it down 27 yards. 
Anthony Thompson also made his move to the middle of the field, gives Stojanovic a straight out shot at the upright. 9.29 left to go. We're going to take a break right here. Fourth period of play. Champaign, Indiana leads Illinois by one. Sally loses it underneath bucket. Sports on Nesson really explodes when another great season of college basketball excitement returns. See the top collegiate players from around the country as Nesson coverage brings you games featuring New England College Basketball, the Big East, the Big Eight, Pac-10, Southeast Conference, Southwest Conference, CAA, and much more. Another great season of college basketball is coming to Nesson, your New England sports network where we deliver. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski. Marlon Primos was shaken up on the play. He was really hit hard. Let's see if we can pick it up here on the replay. You see him in the center of the screen right now, Wayne. That's number 16. Now watch the block. Boy, he gets leveled. Helmet against helmet. That looked like Buford making the block Whoa. on Primos. That's you know, a lot heck of, of a block for a wide receiver, isn't it? You don't expect that from a wide receiver. Not one like that. 27 yards. Field goal attempt. Stojanovic through the uprights with his second field goal of the day. And he provides a little more breathing room for Indiana. The lead now four points at 13 to 9 with 9.14 left to go. Stojanovic's second field goal of the day. Pete Stojanovic is uh, perfect from that range. Uh, 0 to 29 yards. Now he's 4 for 4. Stay tuned to the end of today's game when Jim and I will be naming the Budweiser player of the game. And Jim, I'll tell you, there are a lot of candidates. And I know we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Anthony Thompson, who's over 100 yards rushing once again. But Derek Brownlow has been in on more than, well, about 13 or 14 tackles here today. And he's done an outstanding job defensively for Illinois. Yeah, I don't think we can name a player of the game yet. It's going to be be determined by who wins the football game. Don't forget the Budweiser player of the game coming up following today's contest. 9-14 left to go in this one. Indiana leading 13-9. Dropping back deep, Jones, number 36. Greg Boysaw, number 22 for Illinois. There is Stoyanovic. Pete Stoyanovich has now kicked 12 out of 14 field goal attempts. He's 2 of 2 from 50 plus. Two 53 yarders this year. I'll tell you something, that young man is going to be kicking in the NFL next year. And you ought to know a little <laughs> bit about that. That kind of consistency that he's had in his career. 95 straight point after touchdowns. There's the Indiana drive. That, you are so right. That's the kind of drive they needed here in the second half. with the approach. Keith Jones into the end zone, and that kick is blown right through the end zone. So it'll be first down for the 20-yard line for the fighting Illini. Now, again, this is not such a subtle factor at this point in the game, but we're talking about the win. And if Illinois is going to move the football quickly here, you would think they might do it through the air. They have plenty of time left, 9-14. They must be able to establish something on the ground, Jim Grabowski, but they've also gonna, they're also going to have to go to the air at some point, and this is, this is a tough situation. They struggled in the second period in the passing game, did mostly due to the win. First and 10 from the 20. Keith Jones breaks a tackle out across the 25 to the 26. That was an Anthony Thompson-type run. Walt Harris wrapped him up. Well, the nose guard Jim Sams had initial shot at him, but Keith Jones just ran through that tackle. Game of six, second and four coming up. Can't say enough about that Indiana offense, the kind of drive they put together to settle everything down from their standpoint because Illinois had a lot of momentum at that juncture. Jones breaks another tackle. Gets around the end for a first down and then some. Out to the 36-yard line. 10-yard gain by Keith Jones. Terry Saunders. 
and Brian DeWitz made the stop. You gotta love the determination in that young man, Keith Jones. Joe Help gets a shot at him, but he breaks that pitch out. Little toss to Keith Jones. Now there's Huff gets one shot at him. Now watch him turn up field right into DeWitz. DeWitz hanging on, hanging on. And it takes Saunders and Dumas to come in to bring down Keith Jones. Mark it at the 35. First and 10, Illini. Binky yeah! couldn't quite hang on. Oh, he was in heavy traffic. Mark Berry was there. He's the man who knocked the ball away. You'll see Jeff Finky, if he could have hung on, not bobbled the football, he had a reception right in the middle of your screen. That's Jeff Finky being guarded by Willie Bates. Now the ball well thrown right there. Now you see a little bobble. He's going back for the football, but Ferry just jars it loose. Good defensive play by number 21, Mark Ferry. Second down, 10 yards to go. Jones hit by Doug Schlereth will not go down until he gets a couple of yards off the right side of the line. And Willie Bates also in on that stop. Indiana is a tough defense to run against Jim Grabowski, and that's one of the reasons why they give up, you know, the yardage through the air. You can't run, you're going to have to throw. The other factor is this. Indiana has been ahead of so many teams early in the ballgame. They dominate teams in the second quarter. Uh, they are they score more points in the second quarter than any team in the Big Ten. So your opponents are going to throw a lot more in that situation, obviously, in the second half. So statistics, I think yardage statistics in terms of offense and defense can sometimes be a bit misleading over the long haul. I agree with that. I mean, everybody <laughs> talks about Indiana having a bad pass defense. I don't really think they have a bad pass defense. Third down. Sean Wax in the middle of your screen. They and underneath you have the tight end underneath Sean Wax right there in the middle of your screen. They really stretched out that zone of Indiana and hit the big third down play. First and ten. Jones hit in the backfield. Hall on the blitz once again. Andre Hall, Doug Schlereth was also there. Loss of a couple of yards. Second and twelve coming up. Wayne, that was either a corner blitz or great reaction by Andre Hall getting across that line of scrimmage to make the tackle. That had to be called, Jim. I mean, yeah, he was in there as, just too quick. As quick as he was across the, the neutral zone, I think you're right. Second and 12. From the Indiana 47. Hoosiers coming. Good call. Keith Jones up the middle against the blitz. And they hit the open lane for about five. Mark Ferry made the tackle. Willie Bates in the middle of that defense was there. So was Andre Hall. You're so right, Wayne. When you see the blitz coming, it's an excellent play to call the quick trap right up the middle. Oftentimes you see him break for big ones. See George now, a little trap right there. You'll see the tight end, tight end trap. That's a mile, but good job of filling by Indiana. with a great effort. It is fourth down, and with 6.05 left to go in the football game, they are not in four-down territory. Minkowski comes out. Watch the way they pick up the blitz on this particular pass play. Well, the line I do a good job of, you'll see the back. That's Turner staying in, picking up Mike Ferry on the top of your screen. Good job, and I think George got a little over-anxious. He had the protection. Minkowski, fair catch signal made by Buford. He lets it go. Took an Indiana hop and is down by the Illini in the vicinity of the 15 or 16 yard line. 
They're going to mark it apparently at the 14 where the Indiana will take over. 29-yard punt, no return. 5.56 to go in this one. Indiana leading by four. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski. 5.56 to go for Illinois. They're playing for a possible bowl game. If they win this football game, they travel to Michigan next week, then finish up with Northwestern. They really need to win this game. The officials started the market at the 14. They place it down to the 16-yard line for Indiana on a first and 10. Hoosiers will try to salt some time away with that man, Anthony Thompson. Zitnik in the middle of that defense got over to make the uh, play initially. Greg Conrad came in from his linebacking slot also on the stop. You have to figure that, again, Illinois must win this game in the scheme of things for a bowl. And, of course, Indiana's playing for a bowl, the granddaddy of them all, and they're trying to stay with Michigan. Just a half game behind the Wolverines at this juncture. Eight of two on that play, second and eight coming up. Thompson, 42 carries, 148 yards. You look at this Illini defense, and they've been playing inspired football. And don't forget, Mo Gardner is out of the ball game. You see now Walker, John Walker, getting the penetration, getting Anthony Thompson from behind. Indiana wanted to control the football in his drive, eat up the clock. But so far, the Illini haven't allowed them to do that. Hoosiers are the 18th ranked team in the nation, facing a third down and about nine yards to go from the 17th. Top deep for Buford, and he overshot him, and Buford had the secondary beaten by two steps. Oh, he sure did. He had Chris Green beaten by three yards. But that's where your case may be with the win. You know, we talked earlier about sometimes it's difficult to throw with the win, too. This ball just was overthrown. You see in the bottom of your screen, good move by Buford. He's got Chris Green 33 beat by four yards. If the ball is there, it could be six. Tom Bollier, out in punt formation with the wind to his back. Twin safeties back deep for Illinois. Bollier gets it away. Their catch signal made. They mucked, but getting it back on the play, Henry Jones. 37-yard punt, near disaster for Illinois. They will start in good field position out near their 46 or 45-yard line. Henry Jones able to get it back after the up. 4.19 to go. Indiana still leading by four. We'll return after these words from your local stations. Be here Sunday night at 10 when Nesson presents the college football game of the week. The Big East on Nesson. Be here for another great season. Wayne Larrabee and Jim Grabowski. That's the story here in Champaign. 4.19 to go. Wayne, plenty of time. They don't have to do anything different. You can run the football, but this is the drive. They don't do it here. It's all over. Griffith and Jones, the backfield tandem behind Jeff George. First and ten. Let it beautifully. A bit of a delay to Griffith, and Bates was in the backfield in Nabble. Make that Jim Sams. Jim Sams, I beg your pardon, in the backfield in Nabble. 91 instead of 81. Well, the Illini tried to cross up the defense with the draw play, but Jim Sams did not buy the draw fake, got into the backfield to make the tackle. Loss of three. 